got so many amplifiers so many hi so i'm like really sick right now and uh, i can't really hear anything uh which means that my job is like not doable and uh that sucks so let's talk about stuff i've heard in the past and you know uh i hear you guys like tier lists so tier list also you know the drill like and subscribe or i will haunt you specifically adam in your dreams okay let's get started audio gd nfb one amp uh, this is a very big, very powerful, um, not super feature packed amplifier that had a pretty warm and enjoyable sound. This was way back before things like the 789 came out. This is way back before things like the A90 came out. Uh, and this is back when basically most of the powerful amplifiers were like thousands and thousands of dollars. So when this came out, I actually thought this was pretty heavily set in A tier. Like it was really, really good. Nowadays, because of the sound quality, some of the statistics that have come out about it, you know, it's not quite as good as some stuff. So I'm gonna put this pretty firmly in B tier. I still think that you get a lot for what you pay for with this thing. It's still a big amplifier that sounds really good, uh, but in terms of measurements and modern day features and things like that, it's not quite up to today's standard. JDS Labs Adam, budget amplifier. Fantastic budget amplifier. Not the strongest, but a very, very, very clean sound. This has a lot of uh, followers behind it, and it should. JDS is a great company. I'm going to put this in B tier. Lear Plus. I just reviewed this a little while ago, so it's pretty fresh in my memory. A um, lot of power. It's not quite as tuby as I would like, uh, but it did have a cool feature where it could be either tube state or solid state as an amplifier, so features go into it. Uh, but the price tag was a little bit high, and I didn't feel like either sound quality from it was great. So I'm going to put this one in C tier. I like the concept here, but I feel like the delivery of the concept could have been just executed just a tiny bit better for it to get higher up in the rankings here. SMSL SH6, another budget amplifier. Very good. In my opinion, this goes head to head with things like the Magni in this price. I think that they're extremely comparable. Both the Magni and the SH6 right now, I think are S tier. They're fantastic values. They sound really good. I'd say if you value cleanliness, go with the SH6. If you value a little bit more bass, don't care quite as much about how clean it is, but still very clean, then go with something like a Magni. Both are gonna be S tier, I think. TA22, I just reviewed this thing. It shocked me. This is a, a tube um, DAC amp and it is uh, honestly surprisingly good I didn't think I was going to like it nearly as much as I did it really did blow me away it's not super feature packed though it is a unique set of features being a tube DAC amp which is not very common and not only that but it's a very good tube DAC amp and I think it probably could have costed $700 if they wanted to but it costs $500 which is still a lot to ask for, but I feel like you actually get what you pay for. I'm super happy with this thing. I'm gonna put this in A tier for sure. Okay, the FIO K7. This was an update to the FIO um, K5, which was a very, very um, popular single-ended amplifier, and the K7 came out with a balanced version. I think when it comes to competing with something like the DX3 Pro Plus, which we're gonna talk about, I think the DX3 Pro Plus is S tier, so I guess that gives that away. Uh, so I think compared to that, this has to be A tier. It's very good. I do wish it had a little bit more power and it's not perfect, but it is pretty good. Shithell Mark II. Um, it's good. It's definitely for gamers. It doesn't have the best sound quality uh, for a 200 ish dollar amplifier um, or the best features for a $200 ish amplifier, but it does have a microphone input and that is very valuable for the right people. Um, I think I like this thing quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't really blow me away for anything though, so I think it avoids S and A and it sits pretty comfortably in B tier. Hyphman EF400, this is their new amplifier. They're coming out with a series of amplifiers. One of them that I've got coming up, I think is the, um, I can't remember the model designation right now, but it's the one that's like also a headphone stand. It's got that cool tab volume knob thing. I'm really excited to test that one out. It seems interesting and unique and different from a lot of other stuff. I think that's cool. The EF400 though, symmetrical design. I liked it a lot. It's built like a tank actually, except for the, the plastic on the face, which uh, 
on mine is a little scratched up, which sucks. It's a relatively complete device without too many highlights, but overall pretty solid performance as a whole. Um, it doesn't measure as well as some of the other amplifiers or DAC amps that are in this price category, so that does go a little bit against it. Um, it's not quite as powerful as some of the other DAC amps in this category um, and price. So I'm going to put this one in C tier, even though I like it a lot, but there's just other really, 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 really good stuff. Okay, DX7 Pro. <sighs> Everything has to be relative to cost and effectiveness. I like this amplifier a lot, but it doesn't stack up because of how expensive it is. It's it's good. It's very good. I think everybody should be happy with it. For performance, it's like A tier, but I think there's a lot of stuff that's A tier for cheaper, and that's the downfall. Is that it's just a little bit kind of expensive for what it's trying to be. Even though it's still a very good unit, I like that new rounded oval build that they're doing instead of the more traditional squared off look so that's cool but yeah i'm gonna put this one in b tier the sings are sa1 uh solid d sounds fine it's very expensive it's not the most powerful it's not the most clean not the most feature rich the build is a little bit behind some of its com competitors uh yeah uh, I'm, I'm gonna give that one a d the only f on this list the hdv 820 Man, I was not impressed with this. This is Sennheiser's like offering for their high-end headphones, like their HD 800S and their HD 820, of course. And the thing with this, if you're using those headphones, it's fine. But as soon as you need anything that's more demanding or you want something that sounds, I guess, better tonally or is better built or has more features or doesn't cost $2,400, really basically anything about the amplifier, uh, there's better options out there. Uh, this could not drive heavy planars. It didn't really have a substantial amount of power. And the simple problem with this one, and this is subjective, of course, for $2,400, it better sound freaking fantastic. And nothing about this screamed like super great or anything like that. Um, it did have, I would say it would have like this or that redeeming feature that might make it worth it. But in reality, like if you're going to spend $2,400 for high end headphones, that is not at all how I'd recommend doing it. It was just kind of a flop in my opinion. I know there's a lot of people out there who bought it and love it. It's good for you. Not for me. Topping A90 and A90D. Let's talk about some S tier amplifiers. Um, so the A90D sounds better. I like the feature set of the A90 though. A little bit more the d version is a discrete version if you don't know they're sort of the same amplifier but handled with a slightly different topology setup so the d provides a little bit more power though both are more powerful than basically any headphone needs and this is actually something that uh because they were so close i wanted to blind test and make sure i was really telling the difference and uh, that was actually a video I posted when I reviewed that headphone amplifier. But yeah, I like the D sound a little bit better. It's a little bit stronger in the bass response than the A90 is, but I really like the toggle system on the A90 uh, in terms of like the IO options. Uh, it just, it, it makes more sense to me. I don't quite love the screen and like volume knob selection system that they have on the, the A90D. So the interface kind of sucks for me. Uh, I'm gonna put both in S tier. Uh, both sound fantastic, but the A90 is a little bit cheaper. It doesn't quite sound as good, but it's still like very, very, very close. Um, and I like the IO better on the A90. Both amps, I couldn't recommend more to, to people. They're just fantastic reference amplifiers for their costs. Topping DX5, uh, C tier. Topping DX3 Pro Plus S tier, like I already said. Um, that one, I think, makes the DX5 pretty irrelevant, in my opinion. Like, the, the performance gain for the cost difference is just not worth it. Um, and that Topping DX3 Pro Plus really throws a lot of Topping's lineup. Kind of, it, it makes a lot less sense when you consider how good that amplifier is, unless you need balance but if you're just basing it off of power features and sound quality the dx3 pro plus is really amazing that is not to say that there isn't better stuff but like for 200 bucks given everything that can that amplifier can do its power its specifications uh its measurement capability its kind of subjective sound quality for most it's just such a good amplifier okay fio k9 pro expensive um well built very big pro or con depending on who wants it um i'm gonna put this in b tier i think i think a lot of stuff is gonna end up in b tier there's a lot of stuff that's very very good but doesn't uh totally blow me out of the water uh the feel sound quality like personally i'd rather run an a90 with the dac than 
that VO K9 for about the same cost. Like I'd rather put a, a $200 DAC and an A90 together than run that. So it doesn't quite make the S tier performance. And uh, for features and stuff, it was pretty good, but not the most feature packed DAC amp out there. Dark voice. Um, it depends on who you ask. If you're like a, a objective measurement guy, this is F tier all the way. If you're like a subjective listener to the right person, it's like S tier all the way. The build is something also like controversial, like it's built heavy and old school well in terms of like uses steel and heavy transformers and shit and it feels like a million bucks. Uh, it's got this great toggle on it. But then like you open it up and like the, the actual construction like it, it's not the best. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Uh, D tier for build I guess but like B tier for sound if you're a subjective listener and you like that sound but it's also like d or f tier for sound if you don't like that sound it's a confusing amplifier it's gonna go right in the middle i don't know ta26 the more expensive slightly better sounding version of the dark voice um f for being a ripoff okay it's not a bad amplifier though uh, but uh i'd personally rather own the dark voice uh xa10 uh cool concept i like the the general build quality of this thing. Uh, the general design is very cool. I think that the color scheme worked really well on this one, although I wish they wouldn't use yellow and red. It would just pick one color, It'd be perfect. Uh, but yeah, you know, this thing was cool. Uh, didn't sound that great though, and it didn't have the most amount of power. So I'm gonna kinda go D tier on this thing. Um, I think my opinion has gotten worse over time with that device. I think I was kinda lukewarm on it, and now I'm a little less hot on it right now. A uh, shit full of four. This is good. You got a hundred bucks and you need a DAC amp. It's a, it's a really good option. I'm going to put it in A tier. It's good. No real problems with it. I think a lot of people are going to be like, well, why don't you spend a little bit more and get like a little bit better. And that's true. But if you only have how much that thing costs and you can't spend any more, it's a good option. Speaking of more shit products, uh, Magnus, uh, Magnus is fantastic. Um, $200. It's got good build quality, great sound quality, lots of features. Uh, there's just really nothing I dislike about this. And I just only basically like it. And then if you want a fully balanced system, you can kit it out with a Modius and have like a $400 DAC amp balance stack that is killer. And I don't think anybody who would buy this would regret it. So... A tier. T-A-Z-H-1-E-S, I think is the model designation. Um, the name is shit. Complete shit. <laughs> it's a terrible name. This would be an S tier amplifier if it had the power. It does not have the power. Um, this was barely able to drive Sony's headphones, which are very efficient anyways. Things like the Z-H, um, I'm sorry, the Z-R1, Z-1R. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but as soon as it comes to like anything above that, uh, it just simply does not have the power. It needs more power to be worth it, in my opinion. Um, I would love for this to be more powerful because personally speaking, I could with how good it did sound, if it sounded like that with more power and just kept everything else, I would probably buy that amplifier and just use that as a reference point. Um, it, it was that good. But that power is a real problem, especially when you're paying that much for an amplifier. You probably have a, a lot of headphones and it just couldn't power big planars at all, like not even remotely close. So when you get into things like your Abyss headphones, some of your Odysseys, uh, even some of your Hyphmans, it, it's just completely shit the bed. I really wanted to love this thing. It just it, it just needs more. Sony, give it some more power. Give it the juice. Okay. I have reviewed a lot more amplifiers than this, and I have heard even more, but there's a lot of them that are kind of blending together and don't really stand out as being amazing or anything like that, um, or really unique or really worth talking about. Um, there's a couple of exceptions. There's some Wu amplifiers that I have tried. There's a lot of Wu amplifiers that I've tried, but haven't reviewed. There's also electrostatic energizers. I don't know if those count in this sort of thing. So there's a lot of stuff I left out, uh, but, um, this is already a, a massive list of stuff. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of uh, how I'd put the rankings. All right. So if you could do me a favor, answer one question for me in the comments. If you could pick an S tier 
and an F tier, what would it be? Like, give me your best and give me your worst. I wanna know how you'd place it. Again, Adam, if you don't like the video, dude, I swear to God. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> Goodbye.